All right, guys, you better watch this video fast because I have a feeling Western's gonna work really hard to get this one taken down. The story starts three years ago when I noticed I couldn't get a single season out of my Western cutting edge. I had the Western rep come right out to my house. He told me that it was a wear component and that I was basically going to have to eat it. I made a video about that and a lot of people told me that my cutting edge and my plow were out of adjustment. I had my plow readjusted and I put a thicker cutting edge, the thickest western cells on and I got a season and a half out of it. And then other people started to notice the same problem. All right guys, I'm on the phone with Greg, but you had an interesting conversation with a Western rep about the steel they're using in their cutting blades, is that right? And he told me, he says, it's a simple fact being that Western is providing a cheaper steel cutting edge as compared to a lot of other. And now, I'm, you know, this is coming from a manufacturer uh, of, the, of the cutting edges himself. Western a huge is supplier. We're talking East Coast and West Coast, flat out telling me the owner himself saying that Western is providing a cheaper gauge steel, a cheaper made steel, which isn't lasting as long. And just to protect my own hiney, I'm just going to tell you right now that everything in this video is fictional. It's make believe, it's just for entertainment and opinion. Nothing in this video is real. Oh, hey, and while you're here, now would be a good time to subscribe, don't you know? Yeah, just click that little red button there. All right, we're looking to look closely at this blade. The difference, we got the Heinecker right here and the Western V-Plow. When did we change this Heinecker? Was it five years ago, Tim? Yeah, a good four or five years ago. We were doing that bookstore. When was that? As of least five years ago. And look at the V-plow. The Heinecker has the exact plows in the same lot. Look at the difference. We've, we've got this much blade left. And we've got that much. We got tape measure? So. Yeah, let's tape measure this. So this has already been changed once before though. We changed this two seasons ago. The Western was changed two seasons ago, right? Yeah, yeah, because when we had the plows for three years. Three years, this will be the second, second change. Second change, and the first year we barely plowed, and then this year, I don't know, man, and then he reset it, because remember it was, they shouldn't wear out that fast? Right. And then he readjusted everything, yep. so, and put a thicker blade on. Right. So, all right, guys, what you're going to see is the first time we brought it in to have the first blade put on after the first season. That's a lot of firsts. Your own cost per hour on just your cutting edge like that. Yeah. You know? Like I said, I wish I had a definite cast in stone answer for you, but I don't. And just too many unknowns. Yeah, I know. That's Western. I called up. You talked to the rep. I did. I actually had the rep come out, Jeb. I want to get this. All right, guys. Just to make sure that my original installer didn't screw up on the adjustment, I actually brought the old blade in before we swapped new blades to see if the old adjustment was still in adjustment, and it was. And so what you're going to be looking at next is the difference in blade height after just a season and a half. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right, guys, uh, we've got, we're going to measure our blades on the Western blade. That was a new blade in 2016. This is the second blade we put on this snow plow. How many times do you think we plowed on this thing? Not very many. I mean, last year was bunk. So we got three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch on the Western blade, and that was the upgraded blade, and that plow was adjusted. The thickest one you could buy. Now and we're looking at the C adjusted. scoop. And the C scoop has how many inches on that blade left? Two. Two inches, and that's got how many seasons? Five, four or five? Four, I think it's five seasons, two inches left, 2016, so a season and a half. That's got three quarters of an inch left. Western versus Heinecker. Was it? I can't remember it was like 150 bucks for that cutting edge. Opposed to, I don't remember what we paid for that. I know it was high. Wasn't it like 500? 
Anywhere from three to five, yeah. Three to five hundred bucks. So in the first season, we spent around four to five hundred dollars to get a new cutting edge put on. And now we're going into year number three and we're going to spend $842.79 to have a new cutting edge put on, but we're also updating it and putting the curb guards on it and getting again the thickest cutting edge we can and having the blade readjusted for the third time. Yes, this plow is nickeling and diming us to death. Go Western. What plows do you think we got let's, on that place? Say 15 to 20. 15 to 20. Let's just say that's you know, because last year was bunk. That wasn't much of a snowfall. No. Nope. We went out maybe 10, 11 times. This year we've been out maybe five times. Five, yeah. So that's, and it was pretty new last year when we put it on there, wasn't it? Yeah. So let's say there's 20 snowfalls on there, just to be benefit of the doubt. That's just, I don't know, I guess. Doesn't... You think you should get more than 20 pushes on a, on a blade? Maybe we're just doing bigger lots than other people or something. I don't okay, know. Okay, but that truck's working every hour that this truck is working. Yeah. Alright, so you tell me, what? How does, how does that math add up? How does that math add up if that truck works every hour that... Hey, John! John, yes, sir. which truck works more, the red truck or the white truck? Uh, the red truck. And what do you mean? It, 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 what do you mean by that? Uh, because every single person, every swinging uses that truck, and just you or Tim use the white truck or my big buddy here. And the reason that works, the red truck works more, is it's got the fuel tank on it, so it has to go off every single event. That is correct. That's why everybody uses it because they bring it to the job sites. Yes, every single event that truck is at because it fuels up all of the equipment. That truck gets parts. You guys have seen it. You, I have. I've been running that truck while that truck sits at home because I need the fuel tank. So. And this truck needs a brand new blade already, and this one still got two inches on it. Now just to be clear guys, I can't substantiate, back up, or verify anything that you're about to hear in this next conversation. So just take it for what it is. Alright guys, I'm on the phone with Greg, but you had an interesting conversation with a Western rep about the steel they're using in their cutting blades, is that right? Yeah, so I remember actually over a year ago, um, last winter um, for our snow removal season, you actually posted something regarding um, Western snow plows, and I, I commented on one of your photos and I asked you um, kind of what your what your issue was with snow Western snow plows. And you commented back to me mentioning that they have their you know, cutting edges don't even last as long compared to other plows that you've actually run. Yep. And you know that striked uh, something inside me. And you know I I contacted a, a steel manufacturer. It's actually a wholesaler. And they're a wholesale supplier for cutting edges of all Western and uh, Boss, Hineker, Cog, Curtis snow plows, every every snow company, snow plow removal company for um, for cutting edges and blades. And I talked to the manufacturer, the owner of the company themselves, on the phone, and he's a supplier. So what he does is he's actually a manufacturer of uh, the steel itself for the cutting edges. I, I brought up your conversation, your conversation that you had with me regarding that you know your cutting edges don't last as long for your Western blades, and I asked him why, and he told me he says it's a simple fact being that Western is providing a cheaper steel cutting edges compared to a lot of other, and now I'm, you know this is coming from a manufacturer uh, of the, of the cutting edges himself, and he like I said he is a wholesaler, so he actually supplies the people who are selling these Western edges. So he told me that Western it, it's due to the fact that. They are, they're selling more blades, and it's it's you know a money scheme. You could picture that if you're buying a Western snowplow, and your cutting edges are lasting half the amount of time, then they're having, you're forced to actually have to purchase more cutting edges. You know that's like I said, that's from one conversation in itself. So I looked into you know more details further than that. I kept researching online, researching online. Now obviously there are different factors, different terrain conditions that you're you know you're plowing on, and as well as you know the your your shoes on your snowplow as well. But one thing specifically is in the eight and a half foot Western MVP. Now. It's another common problem that a lot of people are having. I did more research and you know, people all across America running this specific plow. I did more research and talked to him. He says, he called up the Western Tech himself and he, quote unquote, this is exactly what Western says. We kind of missed the mark on this one. And now this is regarding their cutting edges. 
months from now, what people are actually doing, since their Western cutting edges aren't lasting as long, they're going to steel manufacturers and they're having them make and do punch outs of, of aftermarket cutting edges to last longer on their Western plows. Now, Western is now losing business because they want to get more business from selling more cutting edges. Now, people are going out and getting aftermarket cutting edges made for their Western snow plows. That's what I'm going to do, so, Greg. That's my plan is I'm putting a Western cutting edge on and having my Western snow plow adjusted by a Western dealer. And I don't know if I can get uh -huh. the word Western anymore into that one sentence. And then I'm going to take my other Western snow plow and I'm not going to have it adjusted. I'm not going to have anything done to it. I'm just going to have a steel manufacturer put on their cutting edge. And I'm going to do a side by, and I'm doing it at the same time of the season. And it's on the two trucks, same year trucks, same Western MVP3s. And I'm going to see which one lasts longer because everybody's coming back and saying the snow plow's out of adjustment. But I'm going to tell you, Greg, that I have, I've had a Heinecker V plow. I've had a Boss V plow. I've never had to make so many adjustments, I'm air quoting, on a snow plow to make the cutting edge last and still not have it work right. So what you're Western 100% it's, it's an ongoing problem with Western and it's not just you I'm talking all over the internet you can read you can you know the V plows the Western they're like oh the adjustment the adjustment it's not the adjustment everybody keeps saying they keep on getting their plow adjusted by a dealer well guess what and, and when it all comes down to it when there's a steel manufacturer who sells the Western plow saying oh I'll sell you their, their edge but I'll tell you right now as somebody that is manufacturing steel they say western is selling a cheaper steel and they're actually preferring that you sell you purchase an aftermarket because they'll tell you oh it's actually cheaper and it will last longer so western is is having a, this is a, a problem within and we're coming from a western tech saying oh we kind of missed the mark quote unquote missed the mark on this one they, they know that they screwed up i don't think they missed the mark I think, I personally think it's intentional because that mark can be changed. As soon as you're aware that there's a problem, you can change that going down the road, right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So that's not, I mean, and that's a wear component. That's interchangeable like that. I mean, it's as simple as going to a, di a heavier gauge steel, heavier in the steel in the cutting edge and problem is solved. But what I noticed is that my Western MVP3, at least locally, was just a few hundred dollars cheaper than my boss, V-Plow, okay? So when it came down to it, they were able to undercut that price, but the Western is costing me a heck of a lot more a long, lot more. A long term, yes. Exactly, so you're gonna spend less on the plow up front, you're gonna be spending more money in the long run doing maintenance for cutting edges on your Western plow than any other company. Absolutely. So. Wow. Well, thanks, Greg. I appreciate you coming on and sharing that with me. That's, I mean, this is exactly what I was seeing out there, but to actually hear the manufacturer. So this was the manufacturer for all of the cutting edges. The, all of the cutting edges. And he says that Western... A huge is, supplier. We're talking East Coast and West Coast. Flat out telling me the owner himself saying that Western is providing a cheaper gauge steel, a cheaper made steel, which isn't lasting as long. Well, doesn't get better than that coming down to the manufacturer saying it himself so if you if you guys are listening and you're having problems with your westerns it may not be it may not be adjusting it it may be going to a heavier gauge or a better cutting it Alright, this next part, I know some of you guys are going to argue with me and I want to hear your opinion. Then the controller. I hate this controller. I've snow plowed my entire life and I've never found a controller that I hate more than this thing. A lot more simplified the, for, the best for, controller for a brain Heinecker. dead snow plow dryer. Have you seen the Heinecker controller? That's just the straight plow though. Dude, no, I got a Heinecker V controller. Let me show it to you. This is Flipping awesome. Here, can you yeah. hold these controllers side by each? Check this. No, check this out. This is a V controller. That's the Heinecker. Oh, scoop V side to side. Look at that. Look at how much easier that is. And that joystick? That's a thumb controlled joystick. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, this just confuses me when you hit this 
and then it'll go either forward or backward. I try not to use those sometimes. And, but uh, So you hit it once and it'll go forward. And then you and hit, then it, you hit it twice and it'll go backward. And you can't remember which one I'm on half the time, so I'll be pushing a pile and I'll just go to wing it real quick and yep. then it'll open up and I leave wind rows. And then I'll either hit this one hoping to put it forward again. I don't know. The, the little buttons confuse me. Oh dude, you know what really confuses what I hate? Is this button right here. That button right there because you don't know I, like a lot of times you hit it you go down and you're not in flow so you got to hold it oh I guess you got to hold it for an extra second so uh, even though you go down you feel it hit yeah. you're not in flow then you got to hold it you got to hold it just for the count of one but you know what when you've been plowing for 20 hours straight and you got more important things to do than to wonder and you don't have a detent Right? Can you see that that little delay makes a big difference? Boom. That's when you're in float. So you hit it, you're down, you think, all right, on to bigger and better things like not running into cars and curbs, but you're not floating. So you go up and over a lot, boom. And then hold it. So it hits, then you hold it, and it goes down. That huh. is annoying. Like with this one, it's got a detent. So when you pull backward, you're automatically in flow. Okay. You're automatically as soon as you as soon as you hit the detent, you can actually feel a little nub and you're you're in business. Boom, it's just as easy as that. Scoop V and that's it. This is two buttons and a joystick on your thumb, not a whole joystick, which is a big difference, or nine buttons. And two of them have the same function. One, two. I truck can't stand this controller. It's really, it gets confusing. Gee, Stan, why don't you tell us how you really feel? I gotta ask you a question, because Tim, the whole reason we bought the Western Plows was because you had a Western straight blade for 10 years. Yeah, and that thing lasted forever. I mean, you know, that straight blade lasted, nothing really went wrong with it. I think I changed the motor out once, that was like after plowing with it for nine years. Yeah, how, how many years did we have that Western? And that was easy. I don't remember. And we didn't have problems with the, the cutting edges on it either, did we? Nope. The straight blade was fine. It's just, that's the reason we bought this. We had so much good luck with that Western, and you liked it so much. We bought yeah. two Western, two of these, and they're, it's like night and day difference. It's not even like it's the same company, is it? I just wish the blades wouldn't wear out fast, that, as fast as they do. Because, yeah, so far the plow itself has been pretty good, hasn't it? I like the plow. I like the plow a lot. You don't it, like the controller. I'm surprised what it, it held up to that last snowfall. I was waiting for it to snap off my truck, and it was it held up great. It's but, a snowmageddon. Yeah, it did. It sucked. That sucked, man. But uh, yeah, the controllers and the and the, the blades, I guess, cutting edges. All right, I'm going to tell you straight up. The Western Plow itself, outside of the cutting edges and the controller, has been awesome. Very problem free. The main components have been rock solid. Remember, I'm talking about everything except the cutting edges and my personal hatred for that retarded controller. I can't stand that thing. And the, the Western Plow, I have no complaints with, but the buttons are so small. I don't care about the number, but they're so small that I find myself having to look down every time to make sure I'm gonna hit the right one. Did you even notice, now Tim has ran the Western for three years. Right. Did you even notice that you gotta hold the button down to get it to go into float position. Yes. You did notice that? I did, it took me a while. Okay. But I did notice it because I was like, this isn't working right. And so I looked at it, <laughs> I looked at it, and I was like, well, what if I just like hold it down, right? Yeah. You know, cause I'm too lazy to get out of the truck. So I was like, well, what can I do from in here? And then it went into float. And that, and that works, but it's it doesn't, it's not natural. Right. You know, it shouldn't be like that. Should not be like, yes, because I noticed it too where like, You'll be climbing a hill and you're going up, and if you don't have your plow and float, you all of a sudden left all the snow that you were pushing up the hill as soon as you went over the crest. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and it doesn't have the ability, you've got to look at it to know that you're in float. Right. That's the problem. Yes. It's not like it's got a detent where you can just flip it and, and go by feel because... This Heinecker, I never have to look at the remote. 
I'm just I'm just plowing. Yep. With the western, I'm always looking down at it, and and it's fine for just a little place. But when you're plowing something like this all night, it takes away time. It it's, just, it, it's not. You natural. got better things to do. So I I think simpler the better. I think they've overcomplicated this controller. I think they, that's great for some guys that are plowing a single driveway or doing whatever they want to do, and this isn't what they do day after day, 24, 25. You you plowed. Last week you plowed 24 hours straight. It was more than that for him. You no, on like, this on this site. This site, yeah. yeah. This site you plowed 24 hours. Then you plowed another 10 or 12 on another site. Then you slept two hours. Then you plowed another 10 or 12. And then you slept, I think, four hours. And then you went back out plowing again. The last thing you want to do when you put that many hours in is look down at a retarded controller and go which way is my blade going? well at that point you're so tired you can't see the controller <laughs> <laughs> all right guys now i know some of you guys love your western and that's fine fanboy this review focused more on the things that i think western is doing intentionally to make people spend more money they're selling their western mvp for less than the boss plow at least in my local area but long term, this is costing a lot more money. So if you guys are dead set on buying a Western snowplow, here's a little hint. Uh, here's some advice that I've got for you. Ask them not to put on a cutting edge at all and to subtract the cost out of the new snowplow period and then go to a welding shop and have them put a real cutting edge on. Something that will last you more than a season or a season and a half. Remember, I've had this Western MVP3 adjusted three times in the last three years and have had two cutting edges put on both of my trucks. I've got two of these units and it's been the same for each unit. I don't want to see you guys spending a lot of money on cutting edges when there's better alternatives out there. So if you're dead set on a western plow, go ahead and buy it, but just be ready to put a brand new cutting edge and when you do it, I'm going to recommend you do an aftermarket or something completely out of the western arena. Now, I'm going to again protect my Heidi and tell you that everything in this video is just my opinion. So you take it for what it's worth. I hope this video has helped you out. Let me know what you guys think of this. Let me know what your favorite plow is. And more important, let me know, are you having any of the problems that we brought up in this video down below? God bless you guys. Go get them. And happy snow plowing.